Bun comes with its own test runner. Is this a serious alternative to established runners like Jest or Vitest? Let's find out. Hey guys, when rebuilding my blog, I wanted to unit test my content backend service. Of course, my first thought was to use Vitest because I've had a good experience with it so far. But I was curious when I found out that Bun comes with its own test runner built in. So I gave it a try. In this video, I will share my experience and my thoughts on Bun test with you. You may be familiar with other test runners like Jest or Vitest and ask yourself, why should I care about another one? The short answer to this is performance. But why is testing performance so important? If the tests within a project are too slow, it becomes painful for the developers to execute them. Moreover, the developers have to wait longer for the feedback on the changes by the CI pipeline. In the end, slow tests slow down the whole development process. This is very expensive. The software quality might suffer as well, because when executing tests during development leads to high friction, it's likely that there are less tests written in the first place. So, fast test execution is crucial for your project's success, and the choice of your test runner has a high impact on this. And it happens that bun test is extremely fast. According to a benchmark from the docs, bun executes about 266 React SSR tests faster than Jest can print its version number. That's insane! I also noticed that performance is no issue with the bun test runner when testing my content service. It currently has 56 tests across 11 test files and it runs in a quarter of a second on my M1 Mac. Using the watch mode is also very enjoyable. It re-executes only those tests that are dependent on the changes you just made, within the blink of an eye. What does writing tests feel like in BUN? BUN test aims to be very close to Jest's API. The same is true for VTest. So if you use one of those test runners, writing BUN tests will be very familiar to you. Here is what a basic test can look like. You can see that like in Vitest, we import our test helpers from a module instead of having them globally exposed. An important part of testing is mocking of functions and modules. This is also enabled by BunTest. While it looks very similar to mocking in Vitest or Jest, there is no hoisting in Bun. Instead, the module cache is patched at runtime and the module member bindings are updated as well. This lets us easily close over mocks in the module scope from within our mock factories. With the hoisting of module mocking in Vitest or Jest, this can be quite confusing at times. So, given the great performance boost, we should all switch to bun test, right? Not necessarily. There are some things that can hold us back. There are many features from Jest and Vitest already implemented in BunTest. Some essential ones are missing though. For example, at the time of recording, the entire fake timers feature is not implemented yet. This can easily be a deal breaker for certain tests. So if we depend on those missing features, we can either find a way to work around them or we split them up to run a set of tests in another test runner. A solid way to partition our test files is to give them different file extensions. This also works very well when you have your test files next to your implementation scattered across the whole project. In Vitest and Jest, a different extension can easily be configured in the configuration file. Here is an example of a Vitest configuration. Now we can run our bun tests via bun test and our vtest tests can be executed via bun vtest. Awesome! And with each bun upgrade, we can check whether we can migrate some tests to bun. Let's quickly talk about test isolation. This is totally missing from bun right now. 
Test isolation does not come without performance cost. This means if you have side effects, like mocking a module within one test suite, this may lead to issues within another test suite that is run subsequently. Especially with module mocking, this may be an issue. Because in BUN, as we saw already, the modules are updated in place. So there is no easy way to restore the old implementation or the original implementation. But this may be less of an issue if you don't mix up test levels like unit tests and integration tests. Because on the same test level, mocks will be quite similar. Another drawback of BUN test is that the test coverage reporting is very basic. It only prints to the command line and is limited to function and line coverage. So if you need a more detailed coverage report or even a machine readable format like Cobertura, you will have to stick to another test runner for now. Currently also IDE integration is missing. I didn't really miss it until now, but I can tell from experience in larger projects, this can be quite helpful if you can debug your tests from within your IDE. Until this is implemented, we have to rely on good old console log debugging. So on the one hand, BUN test is very fast and it is well equipped for basic tests. But on the other hand, for some of us, there are some showstoppers using BUN right now. If your only concern are missing features in BUN test, you may consider splitting up your tests and using another test runner to close this gap. All in all, the BUN team does a fantastic job developing a performant test runner for the JavaScript ecosystem. If you didn't decide until now whether you want to adopt BUN itself, you can have a look at this video next. In this sense, never stop learning and see you in the next video.